we are live hello everybody um tonight it's a little toasty in the house so i am in the basement and we are going to play a little game of what's in the box and probably you can guess what's in the box based on the box here uh so this arrived uh, a couple days ago it is uh the well obviously the marvel uh, dice throne i'm gonna adjust my microphone a little bit marvel dice throne uh, kickstarter the uh battle chest i actually don't remember what i ordered so uh we're gonna kind of learn uh together what's in here so let's take a look here flip this all over beautiful styrofoam packaging a giant box that we're going to move to the center of the screen and I'm guessing some promo cards so we don't need the box anymore let's take a look at this this is a big boy um whoa those are pretty we'll take a look at those in a second first things first let's get into the actual box itself Take off the seal. And let's see what we got. Oh my goodness, this thing is tight. Come on. Come on, you can do it. So inside, we've got some uh, beautiful artwork on the inside. I'm not really sure why it's nice it's really nice looking that would be an awesome play mat i wonder if i can find that image somewhere rocks leave it's out there let us know uh what do we got we got oh standees and stuff why do we have standees is this for a different mode is this for dice throne adventures we'll take a look at that in a minute oh the uh delicious silica gel do not eat it um, then we got all our heroes here. So we're going to go take a look here. We've got Black Widow. We've got Doctor Strange. We've got Black Panther. We've got Captain Marvel. We've got Miles Morales Spider-Man. We've got the Scarlet Witch. We've got Loki. And we've got Thor. And this box is beautiful for storage. That is nice. All my other dice thrown stuff, unfortunately, I don't have all that stuff. So we're going to move that over. Take a look at the promo cards. But let's check out the rules section here. If I can figure out how to open up the package. Oh, there we go. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, probably don't need that. So the standees, those are the tokens, and the standees, I don't really understand what the tokens would be for. Or what the standees are for. It's gotta be Dice Throne Adventures, right? Oh, lots here. I don't have Dice Throne Adventures, so I don't actually know. Rules, probably the same as the standard Dice Throne rules. Oh, literally, I just started, Laurier. <laughs> so you, you've missed nothing. I've opened up the box. Um, so I'm just taking a look at the rule book. I'm not going to go through it here. I'm just kind of flipping through it here. I'm trying to figure out... Was that the first player marker? Companions. Oh. Um, we decided to kind of rebrand the uh, the board game uh, stuff, and that's the name we're going with right now, is Only Games from DM North. Um, yeah, kind of looks like your standard stuff there. Um, we'll pop those tokens later, because we don't really care right now. So we'll get those off screen. We don't need the rule book. Let's take a look at these little promo cards. So 
So these are super shiny. I did not know these were going to be foil. Eight randomizer cards. I don't know what this is. Mythic card. During setup, place this in your play area with the active side up. When this card is on the active side, the active ability remains in effect if the card is active. I need to learn what these mythic cards are. I have no idea. But look at them. Uh, actually, I don't know how well you can see. So let's uh, let's zoom in a bit. Well, we have them. And let's just make that a little clearer. I think that's okay. Uh, so you can see they got some nice foiling on them. Not quite Dice Master's nice, but it's pretty good. I, I like it. So I'm gonna have to learn what mythic abilities are. I have no idea what this what this applies to. I wonder if this is something else with the Dice Thorn Adventures. No idea. But those look pretty, and these are uh, oh randomizer cards. Oh, that's these guys. Okay. So if you don't know who you want to play. Randomize them. Is that a new back? That is a new back. The other Dice Throne cards do not look like that. So randomizer cards. Mysterious Mythic Ability cards. It's what's in the box cards. And then uh, promos for each of the characters here. Um, we'll throw them in as we kind of come across them. So why don't we take a look. Did yours come from UP? It came UPS. Um, it sat in limbo for at least uh, almost a week before it actually moved and then it just appeared so uh, if you've got the tracking number it's probably not long um, but yeah UPS is how it came so let's start from top to bottom let's take a look at Thor let's find Thor's uh, promo card so we're ready for him Thor 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 boom Okay. Again, I really like the way uh, Roxley's packaged all these heroes, or, or whatever, characters. Um, everything's kind of nice and compact. Uh, again, they fit nicely in the box, but even the retail version, I bet, is going to be nice just for storing things. Uh, my Dice Throne Season 2, I just have the boxes I never sprung for this fancy uh, battle chest or whatever it's called. Um, but yeah, basically everything you need is in this little package here. You've got your Thor player board, which is, that's gorgeous. Look at that. Sorry for the glare, people. We're gonna flip that over. So that is Thor by the will of the gods. I am invincible, I am Thor. Uh, let's check out some of his abilities. Oh, sweet. That's going to glare. That's awesome. Um, some decent damage abilities under Hammered. Four, five, seven damage. Mighty Summon. I, the art just looks spectacular. Like, I feel they stepped it up a notch for, uh, for this one. Uh, gain two, Guard Break. I have no idea what those do. Heal two. If you have Mjolnir, gain three, Electrokinesis. Oh my god, I'm going to have to learn all these tokens. Um... Oh, cool, you get to, like, throw the hammer. Chain lightning roll three dice, deal damage equal to the total roll value of any two of these dice as an isolated source of collateral damage to a chosen opponent. That is pretty cool. Uh, lightning rods, small straight. You need to do a Marvel dice throne two and add the other main guys. We need Hulk cap. To oh, for sure those are coming. I guarantee those are coming. There's no way Roxley doesn't do that, especially if they got the Marvel license. They're gonna they're gonna milk it. Uh, deal seven seven damage if the opponent you're attacking has Mjolnir. Deal nine damage instead. Otherwise, gain electrokinesis. Bottled lightning. Throw it. I like that you could throw and retrieve Mjolnir. That is so fantastic. Uh, throw and retrieve Mjolnir. So there's a lot of hammer hammer stuff here. Uh, so let's take a look at the abilities here. Uh, guard break. If a player concludes their offensive roll phase with an attack, they may spend this token and roll one die. 
If the outcome is one to three, the attack becomes undefendable. That's solid. Electrokinesis, uh, booster spend to draw a card. A player may spend three electrokinesis at any time to draw one card. Nice. Mjolnir, a companion. Um, and by the way, since you're a Calgary guy, isn't it a cardinal sin to do anything else during st a stamps game? They're not watching the game at the moment. I I don't care. <laughs> I'm not a huge CFL guy. I'll watch like the playoffs, that kind of stuff at the most, but I don't. Uh, nah, I'm good. Um, Mjolnir companion. So I haven't really played much with companions. Uh, when you throw or retrieve Mjolnir at any time by discarding a card, if an ability tells you to throw or retrieve it, you do not need to discard a card. When you throw Mjolnir, place it on a chosen opponent and deal one damage as an isolated source of undefendable damage. When you retrieve Mjolnir, place it back on your hero board and gain electrokinesis. You cannot throw Mjolnir at an opponent unless it is on your hero board. You cannot retrieve Mjolnir if it is already on your hero board. That makes sense. In a multiplayer game, if an opponent who has Mjolnir is defeated, retrieve it. Oh my god, I didn't even notice this. Look at that. A beautiful metal Mjolnir. Who needs that cardboard piece of junk? Look at that. That's heavy, too. Holy cow. That is gorgeous. And I got my fingerprints all over it already. That is amazing. Good show, Roxley. Uh, the dice. I mean, the typical stuff that you come to expect. Different faces, different symbols, different colors. Were the original ones different colors? I don't remember that. Either way, very well made, very nice marbling. Uh, I'm a fan. Um, let's just bring this on here. Uh, your standard little combat point tracker, your life tracker, that same old, same old, but really nice art on it. And your cards. Uh, I don't think we'll go through all the abilities here. We'll kind of just learn those as we go. But we will throw the Bifrost in the mighty Thor. Hammer time indeed. Look at that's amazing. Amazing. Roxley always puts out solid games. Like their production quality is is fantastic. Did I screw up how this goes in? I did. Goes in that way. Okay. That is the mighty Thor. Let's check out his buddy. Loki. Loki. Let's check out this art because this I'm really liking this stuff. Pretty good. I like it. Dig it. Uh, let's look at some of his abilities. So we're not gonna actually know how to play these guys until we actually, you know, start playing with them. Duh. Um, standard six, seven, eight damage. Drawing card, gaining illusion. If any of your opponents have any more health than you, gain illusion and deal seven damage. We're gonna have to learn what illusion is. We won't go through. Oh, what's this thing? Gain illusion, inflict three spellbound. Choose four players to gain bag of tricks. Okay, let's learn. Let's learn. Oh my god, I didn't even notice the other side. Oh, look at that. Okay, so this side's got the little, uh, little bio, which is cool. Uh, some rules clarifications on the different abilities, which is nice to have on the card. Loki charms. Oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. Uh, okay, illusion, unique status effect. Attempt to find Loki among his illusions. Begin the game with your three illusion cards set aside. I will have to find my illusion cards. Oh, that's probably them right here. Why don't we check those out? So what are illusion cards? Oh! So you're going to put these down and they're going to have to figure out which Loki is actually Loki. That is fascinating. Loki prevents the damage. Loki prevents zero incoming damage. Takes it on the face. And Loki prevents half the incoming damage. That's kind of neat. I can't wait to try that. Um, begin the game with your three illusion cards set aside. A player with this token... Feeling low key punk. Oh my god. <laughs> we need a we need a pun limit. 
there, Laurier. Um, actually, I'm just going to move things around a little bit so I can see a bit better. Um, okay, sorry. I have to find Loki among his illusions. Begin the game with your three illusion cards set aside. A player with this token may spend it when being attacked. If spent, present the three illusion cards to your opponent face down in any order. You may suggest which card they should select. I'd like it. The attacker chooses any card. Flip over the chosen card and resolve the text. This token may not be transferred by any means. So Loki is the only one who gets to play around. I want to play this guy. Uh, bag of tricks. Uh, positive status effects. Stack limit two. Roll and gain a surprise. During their upkeep phase, a player with this token removes it and rolls one die. On a one, lose one CP. Two to five, Loki chooses whether the player heals two, gains CP, or receives two damage. On a six, gain two CP. Loki's a jerk. That's basically all you need to know so far. Uh, spellbound. An offensive ability cannot be rolled. When inflicted, place this token so that it covers the name of an opponent's offensive ability. You cannot cover an ultimate ability. A player with this token may not activate the offensive ability that is covered by this token. A player who only has one offensive ability uncovered cannot be afflicted with this token. Remove this token at the conclusion of their offensive roll phase. This token may not be transferred by any means, but can be removed. That, okay, where are those tokens? That looks kind of cool. Where's my Loki tokens? Where's my Loki? So these guys basically block out abilities so you can't actually use them against you. Loki is looking like a solid dude to play against. Um, again, our lovely dice. Um, the nice Loki helmet symbol, scepter. I don't actually know what that symbol is, nor that one. But again, really beautiful dice. Again, like I can't say it enough. Roxley does uh, a really good job with all of this stuff. Um, so that. Oh, we gotta find Loki's card. We need to find Loki's card. Where are you, Loki? There's Loki. Loki gets his his card. Loki gets his bio. Loki gets that. And that is our friend Loki. Let's again get that out of the way. And let's see what puns Mr. Laurier has for the Scarlet Witch. You know what? We're going to do things a little differently on this one. Let's take a look at uh, rules, rules clar clarifications with powers that can manipulate reality itself and the meddling of unseen forces. Wanda Maximoff's real origin is a mystery. Blessed with the ability to manipulate chaos magic, she took a, while, took a while to find her place in the world, but now Scarlet Witch has found a new family with the Avengers. Or not, if you've watched Doctor Strange and the whatever <laughs> multiverse of madness <sighs> yeah there there it is there it is um i'm just picking them up as the as they got stacked as they got down there um again beautiful red i don't know how well this shows on stream um love the look of these dice uh, again we're not going to go through that we're going to look for ms Scarlet Witch there. Uh, so let's take a look at these before we look at the... Uh, well, no, let's get this going. Now that... Oh my god, I'm kind of wishing I got a playmat to go with this. Uh, let's take a look at some of these things. Uh, probability manipulation, positive status effect. Uh, tip an even number up or down on your dice. Spend to change the value of any of your dice displaying an even number up or down by a value of 1. Cool. Uh, reality warp. Force your opponent to use one of your dice. If a player is inflicted with this token when they begin their offensive roll phase, they must remove it and use one of Scarlet Witch's dice in place of one of their own until the end of the roll. Phase. Oh, I love that. I absolutely love that because that's going to screw with their symbols. The whole playmat thing. By design, the game is pretty much made not to require one. 
yeah, no, I know you don't need one, but I, I love this kind of art. Like, it's it looks really, really... This red just pops in person. I hope it's, uh, it doesn't show great on, on stream there. Uh, Conjure. Gain a chosen player's positive status effect or inflict reality warp. What the hell are you saying? Once per turn, a player with this token may spend it during their main What's phase to that? either gain a positive status effect from a chosen player's leaflet any opponent may prevent this by discarding a card of their choice. Inflict reality warp on chosen opponent. Crackle. Spend to add damage for each status effect. If the player concludes their offensive roll phase with an attack, they may spend this token. If spent, add one damage per positive or negative status effect on their hero board, excluding the crackle that was just spent. Up to a maximum of three. Only two crackles may be spent per turn. It's an attack modifier. God, these characters look cool. Okay. Wanda, let's take a look at some of your abilities. Kind of same damage things. The Dark Hold. Draw one, gain a CP, gain crackle and probability manipulation. Jinx, damage. Ah, let's look at the ultimate. Seal your fate, gain conjure and probability manipulation. Inflict reality warp, deal 12 damage. All these characters look amazing so far. Uh, I grabbed that already. Okay. Now, <laughs> how many bets on how many puns can Mr. Laurie come up with for young Miles Morales? Let's, uh, anything cool here? Regular stuff. Miles, where's your card? Tingling. And let's look at your dice. Spider symbol, web, thwips, or thwaps, or thwarts. Again, the marbling is just incroyable. I'm just slinging those puns. There's one. Uh, you know what? That's what we need. We need to make a pun counter. I will put that on my to-do list. Uh, okay, Spider-Man. After being bit by a radioactive spider, Miles Morales decided to follow in the footsteps of his hero, Spider-Man. With similar powers as the original Spider-Man, plus the ability to turn invisible, Miles patrols the streets of Brooklyn while still trying to graduate high school. Uh, we're not going to worry about the rules clarifications because we don't know them yet. Um, we should scout. That's two. Is it two? Yeah, two. Okay. Uh, perform another offensive roll. Oh, sorry, combo positive satisfaction. Perform another offensive roll phase. If your offensive roll phase resulted in attack, you may spend this token at the conclusion of your opponent's defensive roll phase. If spent, immediately target the same opponent with an additional offensive roll phase. Can only be spent once per turn, so you get to go twice. I'm good with that. Webbed. Next incoming attack is undefendable. This token has no effect to the turn it is inflicted or transferred. On subsequent turns, when a player afflicted with this token is attacked with normal damage, the damage type becomes undefendable instead, and this token is immediately removed. Invisibility. Uh, roll defense against an undefendable attack. When a player with this token is attacked with an undefendable attack, they may choose to spam this token to activate a defensive ability. This token may not be transferred by any means, but can be removed. So he's the, he's gonna dodge. Shocking. Yeah, I'll give that to you. I'll I'll give that one to you. <laughs> um, lots of quick damage there. Gaining invisibility. Venom shockwave. Gain invisibility. Inflict webbed. Then deal thirteen damage as the ultimate ability. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I guess the deal damage back with his defense. Again, artwork is solid on Young Miles. Oh, what's his difficulty? What is he la really? He's labeled it as two, so not super hard there. <laughs> um, what are you at? Three, four. That one's that one's pretty good. Now for something a little more marvelous. Speaking of marvelous, have you seen the uh, end or the rest of uh, Ms. Marvel? 
from uh, Disney Plus. Where are you, Captain Marvel? I quite enjoyed it. I thought it was really well done. I'm at Thor puns. No, that one doesn't count. Thor's gone. I have not watched Ms. Marvel at all. It's actually really... It's a cool... I, I liked it. It's it's a different kind of MCU show. Um, the the character's quite quirky, which is really good. I mean, it's a teenager. It makes sense. Um, but I, I, dig, I dig it. They did a really, really good job there. These dice aren't as pretty, but I mean, it's kind of an orangey yellow, so what else are you going to do with it? I mean, they, they look good. The paint's well applied, so unlike other dice that we know. Um, get that out of the way there. Captain Marvel. Let's get her beautiful artwork out. My wife started a while back being better due to COVID, but we haven't had time to watch stuff together. <laughs> One. Uh, Captain Marvel, after an alien device mutated her DNA, Carol Danvers transformed from a brilliant pilot into one of the most powerful superheroes in the universe. Now soaring among the stars, Carol Danvers is known as Captain Marvel. Let's flippy. Again, I love these boards. Really good. Uh, so we did all that stuff. Cosmic Ray. Roll two dice and pick one for damage bonus. After attacking, a player with this token may spend it and roll two dice. Then choose one of the two dice and add the value of the die to the damage total. Attack modifier. Can only spend one per turn. Cannot be spent the turn it's gained. Cannot be removed or transferred. I like that some of these are they're stuck on the character, which is kind of good. So instead of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, she's middle-aged Cosmic Punchy Lady. Yes, that's exactly correct. Uh, cosmic Flare, limit of three. Deal one damage per token to all opponents. During their upkeep phase, a player with this token deals one damage per Cosmic Flare to all opponents, then remove one of these tokens. Huh. Interesting. What level are you? You're a level two character. Uh, Radiance, positive status effect, stack limit two. Change a die to a six during defense. A player with this token may spend it to change the value of any die rolled as part of the roll attempt during their defensive phase to a six. I saw, I suspect that would be good. Um, again, we're not gonna look at the in depth here. The binary blast, uh, gain a cosmic ray. Radiance and two Cosmic Flares and deal 12 damage. So yeah, she's a little punchy and looks like she'll be able to punch you in different phases. Defensive rolls. Uh, only one defensive one. That's kind of interesting. Deal one damage, prevent one. Hmm. Okay. That's Captain Marvel. She doesn't look as interesting as some of the other ones. Still looks like fun. Um, okay. Wakanda forever. Black Panther. Get these out of the way here. Black Panther gets his little promo card. Oh my goodness. That is a hot purple. That is super nice. Man. I love that purple. That looks so good. The regular stuff. Get that over there. Okay, let's look at the bio. Oh no, we gotta get the uh, the artwork. Ooh, that's nice. Don't love that his face is cut off, but I like it. The artwork's really cool. Uh, bio. Black Panther is the ruler and protector of Wakanda. A job fit for a king. With the help of the heart-shaped heart-shaped herb granting him legendary power harnessed by his vibranium suit, T'Challa protects his people as the last in a legacy line of Black Panther warriors. That art is perfect. Oh, he doesn't have a lot, a lot of tokens going on there. So let's see what we got here. 
Kinetic energy, stack limit of eight. That's a lot. Uh, boost damage and burst at stack limit. For every two kinetic energy, increase damage from your attacks by one. Upon reaching kinetic energy stack limit, immediately remove all kinetic energy tokens, then gain two CP, draw two, and deal five damage to a chosen opponent as an isolated source of undefendable damage. What are you? You're a two as well. Uh, Vibranium suit. Uh, prevent incoming damage. A player with this token may spend it to prevent three incoming damage. This token may not be transferred by any means. How do you get that? Oh, there we go. Gain Vibranium Suit and three Kinetic Energy. I assume it can still be removed. Oh, yeah, but it can be removed. Okay. Let me spend it to prevent three incoming damage. So not a lot of stuff going on there, but lots of slashing. Uh, only one defense one. Wakanda forever. Gain Vibranium Suit and three Kinetic Energy, then deal 11 damage. So he's going to bounce back a lot, which is kind of interesting. And then he'll kind of explode when he builds up all his kinetic energy. Well done. And only one pun from Laurier. That is Black Panther. So we got two left. Let's go to Black Widow next. I think Glory is running out, running out of steam here. Ooh. Again, really nice. The symbols are really clear. Little sticks. I have no idea what that is. Looks like an eyeball with an X in it. No clue. And then the Black Widow symbol. I like how their symbols is on the ultimate on the sixth side. We'll give you that. We will flip over. Spy on my strat. I have no strategies. What strategies? I literally kind of wing it. Oh, she's a four. She's a more complicated character. Uh, weapon of choice. Stun batons. Bio. Trained from a young age in the Red Room, Natasha Romanoff grew up to be a master spy and physical combatant with no peers. After years of working alone, she found an ally in the Avengers, where she now fights crime under the monkier Black Widow. I'm really gonna have to read these rules clarifications because there's a lot. <laughs> okay, so she's got a few things going on. Uh, let's check out her tokens. Covert Ops. Use to look at or rearrange cards. You may spend this token once per turn during your main phase to do one of the following effects. Put an ability upgrade from your hand into play. Well, does that mean you're doing it for free? Oh, interesting. Look at the top three cards of your deck. If none of them are ability upgrades, you may reveal these cards and search your deck for an ability upgrade. Show it to your opponent and add it to your hand, then shuffle your deck. Otherwise, put them back in any order. This token may not be transferred or removed by any means. So she's a... Sp oh, I get it. She's spying on the deck. I like it. <laughs> you looked ahead. That's You can't, you can't make puns ahead of time. Agility, uh, positive status effects, spend and roll one to three, and roll one to three to avoid half damage. When a player with this token receives damage, the player may spend and roll one die. If the outcome is one to three, prevent half the incoming damage. Okay, so you can dodge, cool. Time bomb, roll a six to attempt to defuse. Take four damage if you run out of time. When inflicting this token, if you have at least six ability upgrades in play, place it on one side up. Otherwise, place it on the two side up. <laughs> uh, during their upkeep phase, uh, a player afflicted with this token must roll one die. On a one to five, advance the time bomb. On a six, remove the token. When the time bomb is advanced from the two side to the one side, makes sense. If the token is on the one side, the player afflicted with this token removes it and receives four damage as an isolated source of undefendable damage. I <laughs> like that too. That's actually kind of cool. She's never my favorite character, but I uh, I like this. 
Uh, she's all about bombing you and spying. These, again, these are all interesting characters, interesting abilities. Okay, last but not least. It does look like it bites. Is that what it was called? Widow's Bite, probably? The good doctor, or the bad doctor. What the hell do you think you are doing? I am looking at Marvel Dice Throne. That just came yesterday, actually. Um, last promo card to go in there. And again, we got our beautiful... Oh, the cape is five. Where's, where's six? The Eye of Agamotto. Kim! Everybody's here. Uh, I don't love the brown. I don't know that I would have picked brown for Doctor Strange, but it works. Symbols are nice. The usual stuff. Got you on a string yo-yo. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we're not looking at the cards. We're just kind of getting a little little look-see at the characters. Oh, I get it. That's why their faces are all chopped off, because, you know, it's got to look like this. And then you open it. Okay. It kind of bothers me that they're chopped off on here, but I, I understand this. Let's get this to spell it, and it shows. <laughs> it... Uh, you know what? I, I like this. I, Based on what I'm seeing so far, I don't see myself playing many of the other characters. I think I might be switching to a pure Marvel. Uh, whoa, what do we got here? Spell cards. Oh, maybe we, need to, maybe we do need to look in here. Maybe we do need to look in his cards. You don't play on that. I know you don't play on that side. Oh, hang on. We got to read his uh, bio. After an accident removed Dr. Stephen Strange's fine motor skills from his hands, the renowned surgeon looked beyond traditional medicine for healing and found the mystical arts. What he was not expecting was to become the Sorcerer Supreme, Earth's preeminent defender against interdimensional threats. And young teenagers wanting people to forget who they are. Okay, where are these spells? Where are the spells? Oh, there's spells. Okay, we're going to look at those. Oh, my goodness. Lots of spells. And the rest are all just like upgrades and stuff. Okay. We'll come back to that. With the amount of abilities there, it feels like you need the dark hold to figure out the meaning of those things. Um, I don't know if I'm going to give you that one. I, I don't think that's one of your better ones. Uh, oh, five. So he's way up there. Okay, spells. Uh, spells have prepare and cast effect. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Enjoy the chicken dance. I wasn't expecting the chicken dance. A little bit. I did get a little bit. It did make me jump a little bit. Uh, spells. So these these cards. We'll look at those in just a second. Spells have prepare and cast effects. When you prepare a spell, place the spell on your passive ability. Book of Ashanti. Do not remove previously. Where is that then? I'm Pickle Rick! Oh, right there. His board does look... Okay, I'll give you that one. Strange. Oh, I'm going to need to fix the Pickle Rick. It's not set up for this uh, this overlay. Uh, when you prepare a spell, place the spell on your passive ability, Book of Ashanti, then perform the prepare effect. When you cast a spell, you may choose any card from your Book of Ashanti and perform the cast effect. Oh, so you're going to be building these up. That's a lot of stuff. Okay, we're, we're going to read those at afterwards. Crimson Bands cannot play cards during their next roll phase. A player afflicted with this token cannot play cards during their next roll phase. Then, at the conclusion of that roll phase, discard this token. Oh, people are going to get pissed when you do that to them. 
Uh, premonition, positive status effect. Draw more cards during your income phase. A player with these tokens may spend them once per turn during their income phase to activate one of the following effects. One token, draw two instead of one card. Three tokens, draw three instead of one card. When activated, one of the drawn cards must be placed on either the top or bottom of the deck. Okay. Uh, deja vu. Restart your offensive roll phase. Instead of activating an ability, player with this token may spend it to conclude their current offensive roll phase and then start a new offensive roll phase. Oh, so if you roll crap, you can do that to redo it? Is, it, is that what I'm understanding? Um, it may be spent during your offensive roll phase at any time prior to activating an ability. Spending Deja Vu concludes your original offensive roll phase. This means the status effects that should be removed at the conclusion of your offensive roll phase, such as spell down, are removed. So you get a do-over. Okay, all-seeing eye. Look at the top five cards of your deck. Prepare up to two spells among these cards. Put the other cards back in any order, then deal ten damage and cast two spells. Let's check out the spells. Well, let's catch up on chat, too. Uh, still haven't traded that spare Wonder Woman, by the way. Mike's and locals are just now getting their Superman Kryptonite Crisis. So I can stay at the shop extra long tomorrow. Oh, what's to is tomorrow a uh, release day or just a regular, a regular uh, working day? It is late over there. Uh, images of Icon? Prepare effect, none. Cast effect, add one damage to an attack for each card in your hand, up to a maximum of four, then discard this card. Sorry, these are single use, I'm guessing. Uh, Fangs of Ferala. I've been trading hard, I'm just down to the Beatles, Superman, and Supergirl. Hey, if you need a Superman, like that's all I apparently pull. Uh, three feeds, three Superman. So if you need a Superman, hit me up. I got lots. Uh, prepare effect. A chosen opponent loses one CP. Okay. Cast effect. Add three damage to an attack. So basically you're doing two things. You're stealing money from people and you're attacking them. Okay. Chains of Krakan. Uh, prepare effect. Inflict crimson bands on a chosen opponent. How do you get those? Or is that how you get it? Oh, you just, yeah, inflict it, I guess. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, chain. Oh, yeah. Prepare. Da, 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 da. Cast effect. Make an attack undefendable, then discard this card. Uh, Mists of Morpheus. Prepare effect. A chosen player gains deja vu. What did we do that one? Oh yeah, you want that, so we, we want that. Cast effect, heal any hero, three, then discard this card. Uh, Winds of Watum. I imagine I am, like, butchering these names here. Prepare effect, you may remove a status effect token from a chosen player. Okay. Cast effect, prepare a spell card from your discard pile, then discard this card. Ooh, I like that one. Bolts of Balthak. Uh, prepare effect, gain a CP. Cast effect, deal three damage as an isolated source of undefendable damage to a chosen opponent. Then discard this card. Vapors of Valtor. Prepare effect, heal and hero. One. Cast effect, gain three premonition. Then discard this card. What was that again? Oh, drawing extra cards. Rings of, oh my god, Ragador. Uh, prepare effect, gain premonition, cast effect. Cast up to two different spells in your discard pile, then discard this card. I like that one too. Flames of Faltine. Felt Faltine? Faltine? Uh, prepare effect, deal one damage as an isolated source of undefendable damage to chosen opponent. Cast effect, add one damage to an attack, then return this card to your hand. Oh, so you're always going to have this card. Hmm. Uh, Wally Joker Hawk Girl. 
Okay. I, again, I said it already. I do really dig the art on this. I'm liking these abilities. I am uh, looking forward to actually playing with these. So, uh... Oh, do you need a Lois, or do you have an extra Lois? Again, I've got, I got Superman and Lois, which is kind of funny. Those are my doubles so far. Um, so I'm looking forward to actually playing these. I guess we're just waiting for people to get it. Uh, Kim, if you're out there, and Laurie, have you gotten your tracking numbers yet? And Mike, I don't remember if you said you were getting it or not. I don't remember what the, what's, what the deal was there. No tracking number at all. So I'll be honest, I think I want, I'm most excited to try Loki. I think he looks like super fun. Uh, actually, all of them look like they could be fun to play. But yeah, I like the uh, idea of like having hidden, uh, hidden cards and I like Thor's hammer. That's actually quite cool too. Uh, I have something from UPS, but don't know if it's dice thrown for another thing I ordered. If it's a mystery one, it very well, uh, it very well could be, uh, uh dice thrown. Cause I, it didn't say what it was. The, I just got a mystery tracking number one day in my email. So that's probably it. And, uh, yeah. Just expected to kind of just sit for a while. That's what mine did. Mine sat for like almost a week with no movement. Then boom, it was in Calgary. Oh, maybe. Secret layer go by a UPS though? Timing of it just feels like... I hope it's dice thrown. Like I hope you guys get it soon because I do want to play this. Um, and I don't feel it's fair to play this when with the older characters when we got the new ones coming because I do want to do a, a dice thrown night. It's the first time I ordered. I ordered a secret layer when the Walking Dead stuff came out because I was a Walking Dead uh, fan at the time. Uh, I don't remember how it came. I, I don't think it was UPS for some reason. So I'm I'm, I'm betting it's it's dice thrown. So um, I lost track of the Laurier puns. No, I, this is all I got. I got the base game and the promo cards that came with it. Oh, while you're here, I got a question for you. Because you have Dice Throne Adventures, even though I think you said you haven't played it yet. But is that what these little standees are for? Because it's got to be it's got to be for Dice Throne Adventures, right? I'll wait and see. Ah, okay. There's no stand. There's no like bases, so that must be for the game. And then, is there anything in Dice Throne Adventures what these mythic abilities are? I don't know if these are supposed to be with the character or if this is something else completely. Let's wait in here for the Twitch delay to find out what these mythic ability things are. Maybe it's in the rules. Maybe I should read the rules and learn, but you forgot. Okay. Well, there's these mystery foil mythic ability cards. I have no idea what those are. <laughs> I appreciate the parting gift, Lori. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. That's like the nicest thing you've ever said to me. I appreciate you guys hanging out. Um, hopefully, uh, the rest of you guys uh, get this soon-ish. Um, so that we can break this out. Because we do always love a Dice Throne night. And I think it would be fun to break out the new stuff. And uh, ideally, if we can get like four... Uh, you are the nicest. You are the nicest comics, Mike, that I know. Um... Yeah, hopefully we can get a game going soonish. Uh, ideally, if we can get four people, we can maybe do the teams again, because that is always fun. Um, or a free for all—that's that's fun too. Um, 
yeah, that's it. That's Marvel Dice Throne. Uh, I assume when uh, Kim gets hers, because I think she went a little more hardcore into this than I did, uh, maybe she can stream her box opening and we can see some uh, new, uh, some other stuff that we're not seeing here. I was fairly cheap <laughs> and I just went in for the base pledge. Uh, but again, uh, Roxley Games, they do, uh, you got it all. Okay, I, I, when you do get it, you do have to do an unboxing. Um, that will be uh, interesting to see. Uh, I'd like to see what, what else was in there, because I forgot. I, I didn't do any of the trays or stuff. Mythic is for adventures. Okay, so I don't need any of that stuff. I just like the cards. Because um, I'm never going to get adventures. Uh, what was I saying? I don't remember. Uh, we will be doing something board gamey tomorrow. I don't know what yet. Uh, I think Kim said she wants something short, so I still got to look at some options. Um, so tune in tomorrow. Same uh, bat time, same bat channel. Oh, bat time. No, it probably will be about 8 o'clock. Uh, 8 o'clock mountain, so 10 o'clock eastern. I think that's the plan. Um, I didn't get... I didn't get any of that other stuff, but I think Kim may have gotten everything. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, like I said, I think that's it. So uh, if you uh, like our content, uh, please uh, think of giving us a like and a subscribe. We do really do appreciate it. It helps us out more than you know. Um, follow us on all the socials. You'll be, uh, I, I will be on game day at the shop. What are you guys playing? What is, what is tomorrow? I think I either missed it or I didn't uh, catch it. Is it a release day tomorrow or is it just a... Uh, a regular regular old day at Mike's comics and games I always hate the awkward uh, waiting for <laughs> waiting for the twitch to catch up um, while we wait for Mike to answer let's uh... yeah <laughs> and my microphone stand just broke so <laughs> on that note <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody, and we will see you next time. Bye.